You call this a rest day? Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Back down in the basement again this week. Uh, it's just before my workout, um, but wanted to get people caught up. So last week I'd had some technical difficulties with audio getting recorded. And one of the things I mentioned in the lost audio uh, that didn't get didn't make it into the second time was the fact that there's more to a nourishing pursuit than diet and exercise. Those are key elements of a nourishing pursuit. You need to have your health, you need to have fitness, but there's more to it than that. One of those things is taking part in activities that you really find interesting that, that, are, that you can be passionate about. And for me, one of those things has been gardening. Um, for a long time, I've had gardens. Some years, I don't have as much time as, I, as others to actually put into it and get a good yield out of it. Last year was not a good year, but this year, things are a little different. With the coronavirus crisis going on, it's got a little extra time, actually a lot of extra time, to work out in the garden, get things set up in the way I want them to go. There's actually a little extra money on hand at this point, uh, given the stimulus and extra unemployment funds and so on. Um, so I've taken a little of that and invested in setting up my garden. So in what was supposed to be a rest day yesterday, I made a good first start on getting the garden together. So I'm going to, you know, in this video, I'm going to go through real quick how I start getting my bed set up and what we accomplished yesterday. All right, so we're going to be making our garden beds today, or at least some of them. So we've got to go from this pile of lumber, 28 foot pieces and 10, 12 foot pieces into what we need for the garden beds and first thing we need to do is since this is kind of rough sawn lumber we need to square things off and that's pretty straightforward to do if i could find my pen so this you just line up your square pretty close to the end hold the long edge against the piece and mark it off now that we've got our piece marked off you can see the black line there We'll cut it off with the skill saw. Now, if we check with the square, that's this amount of straight edge. And that's pretty good. Close enough for a garden bed. So now we'll measure off 12 feet because that's going to be the length of the bed, cut off the other end, and then continue till we've trimmed up all our 12 footers. Let's fast forward as I square off one end and measure off to get my 12 foot length for the 20 pieces for the long sides of the beds. trimmed up all the 12 footers so they're 12 feet and mostly square since this isn't a big construction project it's garden beds it doesn't have to be too exact but close so then the next part is going to be taking these eight footers and cutting them down to squared off four footers those are going to be the end caps on the beds so let's get started with that same procedure check one end for square measure cut and square off the opposite end. So I have all the materials laid out kind of where they're gonna go, at least for the first three beds. I still need to till up for the last two. 
And so the process can be pretty simple. We'll, I'll uh, screw together the short end pieces to the longer pieces on the sides. And it'll be stacked up twice the height to give me a one inch, one foot depth. And then I'll put some braces along each side and the ends to help make sure that they don't move around so that they stay stacked basically. All right, so let's start putting stuff together. So putting the beds together was actually, well, I don't want to say it's the, the easier part, but it was half the job at best. Um, we needed to, to fill up, or at least partially fill up the beds in order to be able to plant. And so that was about another hour's worth of work to take 21 wheelbarrows of composted dirt and dump them in and get it raked out so it's pretty even across the bed. And I got my wife out to help me do that so that everything's pretty even. We didn't, I actually got, uh, I don't have enough dirt to fill all the beds all the way to the top. And it's really not necessary to get it full to the top. Um, with what's in there now, there's an extra six or seven inches of nice, rich soil for stuff to grow in. And that ought to be plenty. And it gives me some room to grow as time goes on as I add compost uh, that, to help keep the bed healthy over time. You can see here, we've got the, the bed full or as full as it's going to get. Um, I did get clever and kind of make little ramps to wheel stuff up over the side. It made it much easier. And I do have garden row covers or you know, garden mats, I guess they're called. And I'll put a link in the description if anyone's interested in picking up some of those. Uh, and it just helps keep the weeds down because the sunlight's not getting to the soil, except in the little holes where we're going to put the seeds. So in this bed, um, one half is being planted to peas, the other half to kind of salad greens and radishes. Um, and so those are the radishes will actually be the first thing that comes up and they should be up oh, in a week or so. And we'll harvest those in a few weeks. The peas, uh, in theory, the package says in 80 days we'll have peas. Uh, so we'll see how, hopefully that'll come out. And obviously that was one bed. Um, I still have two that are built that need to be filled and then two more to be built after I till up the spaces where they're going. Uh, so still a lot of work to go in the garden, but the peas, are real, peas and greens are the only things that can be planted right now. It's still a little cold for most things here in Vermont, so we're in good shape. Hope you found that interesting. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, and stay tuned for the weekly training update. See you next time. The third week of my current mesocycle is complete and things are still going well. Exercises are still getting rated at plus one, so I'll be seeing more volume next week, even on squats, which I confess to being more than a little nervous about, but my leg is still feeling pretty good so far. The volume this week was 94 sets and seven hours of 23 minutes of total workout time. This is up by 17 sets over last week and over one hour of workout time. I've gone up 32 sets from the 62 I started with and almost two hours of workout time. I may need to consider splitting workouts if this rate of growth continues, especially once things get back to normal post-COVID crisis when I'm back to work full time. My diet has been much closer this week as I am less than 10 calories off on my daily average intake. My weight gain is running pretty close to the pace I wanted, so I don't think I need to increase calories quite yet. Eating my actual target seemed to have done the trick. Average steps, my proxy for NEAT, are down about 300 per day from last week, which helped on the weight gain front, I think. This average was down by close to 1,000 until Saturday. The 9,000 steps from working in the garden popped the average way up. I have two more accumulation weeks before my deload, 
After that, the process begins again with the second hypertrophy mesocycle. See you next time. And one of those things is pursuing activities <laughs> and be sure to stay tuned for the